My name is Tohirat and um, this is Art Slim Art Academy. Um, I'm just going to do a brief run through this morning class just for the people that missed it or just like a reminder. So we talked about visual art and digital art. Basically, um, visual art, what it is, how we see it, the origin and what part it plays in our cultures and the development of this culture and how visual art is so important. Yeah, and we also continue to the philosophy of visual art. Basically, what you see, you don't doubt seeing is believing. So we see visual art is all around us and um, it's very important. And lastly, we covered the elements of visual art. We are talking of shapes, lines, space, forms, texture, and everything. So we covered all of that. Colors, everything. So that was that about um, visual art this morning. And then we moved on to digital art, where we said it's similar to visual art, but then in this time around, we are creating the art digitally. It involves, you know, computer, phone, PC, whatever, you are creating it digitally, but then your results may be physical. When you print out the flyers, you print out the business card you created on your system, it's basically digital art that was later made physical. So we talked about what it is, what it means, and how important it is to know the tools that we are using to create the digital art like our Photoshop, Adobe, Sketch, and all of that. My graphic designers will be able to relate to that. Yeah, so basically that's what we did in the morning section, visual and digital art. Now we are moving to something sweet, and um, it's time me will take over from here and put you guys through. Thank you. Thank you, Tahira. Thank you, everyone, for joining. How have, how have the sessions been for us um, so far? Anyone wants to go? Uh oh. So silence usually means that oh, not so interesting. <laughs> but I hope that this evening will cover. Uh, oh, Stanley. Uh oh. Stanley, we can't hear you if you say anything. Okay, so, um, just to get right, to it, right into it, rather, uh, the business of art, and then you know, just like an underquote, balancing the scale. Uh, many times, many times, creatives get frustrated in their process because um, you find that creatives give a, they give a lot into into the creative process, you know, and it seems like uh, the creative process is not given back to them. So, for example, um, Something very interesting. Uh, you find that people pay a lot of money to buy a car. A whole lot of money to buy a car. But when you say, okay, come and buy a painting for just a hundred thousand, they, they want you to justify the reason for proposing to sell a painting for a hundred thousand era. You know, and all of this is happening because it seems like the world perceives us to just be freelancers, not business owners. And that's what we're trying to do today. We're trying to help us realize that what you run is a business. And it's not just a roadside business. It's a full-time and a large-scale business. It's a, in fact, it's something that can grow to become a multinational if you pay attention to it. That's what we're doing at the business of arts. Uh, the contradiction is this. Art generally is about a free flow of expression, you know, 
I am thinking of something I want to express it. I I love something, I want to get it. I I saw something I want to invest and buy the paint to paint it. You know, um so let me let me give us a simple one one very interesting scenario. I once did an artwork for over for about a year. <clears throat> and it wasn't it wasn't like marathon though. It was it was more like, you know, you stop, you continue, you stop, continue, like that. But the the total time, you know, plus the post time and all of that, that it took me to complete that work was about a year. And <laughs> the interesting thing is this. After a year, you know, at the time, again, because we don't see what we do as a business, we, we have some challenges. At the time, he, 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 um, the person I eventually gave, you know, the work to in terms of value exchange. Sorry, hold on a minute. The person that eventually got the work <laughs> paid me five thousand naira for the work, <laughs> and it was it was. It was strange, you know, because, I mean, if you construct for over a year, if you go and construct a building, if you go to a building construction site for over a year, even if you pause, even if you pause for six months, let's say you just construct for just six months, I don't think anybody would pay you less than two million era, six million era, at least within that range. But you see, this, and I mean, this has happened to me, and I, I know it has happened to a lot of other creatives. And, you know, it's also something we have seen at the academy that happens a lot. Artists are always about the free flow of expression. We don't think about talking about value exchange, or we don't think about talking about fair value exchange before we carry on the task. Oh, this sounds like a project I would love. And then you just do it because you love it. And, I mean, so for art, art is always about the free flow of expression. It seeks to allow a man to gain or attain an ecstasy of freedom through creativity. So I just want to do it. That's that's all the artist cares about. I just I just want to create. I just want to write. I just want to I just want to draw. I just want to paint. I just want to act. I just want to do whatever is on my mind. The artist can dream and then wake up, and then he receives some kind of inspiration. And he doesn't care how much, see, <clears throat> if the artist stays in New York, and what he needs is in Hong Kong, the artist doesn't mind sending money to people in Hong Kong, buy what I need and send to me in New York, so I can use to create what I I need. And that, that's, that's almost the, the enigma of every artist. I don't care what it takes, I just want to create what's on my mind. I want to create what's what what I have <clears throat> as a project right now, sorry, excuse me. And that is good, it's not bad. <clears throat> That's not bad at all. It's not bad. In some sense, an artist tends to go wild about his or her art, and all that matters is the spirit of creativity to the artist. Then, management. Is it management? That's that's the interesting thing, though. That's the interesting thing. Art is about creating freedom, expression. Say what you want, do what you want, wear what you want. You know, go where you want, think what you want. You know, go out with who you want. That's that's about art. Food art is about, oh, combining this kind of color, you know, combining tangerine with apple to create what on my mind. That is what I want. It doesn't matter whether it's economical or not. It is what I want. That's about art. But for management, management is more about managing. That's, that's just it. Managing, management is, is like saying, okay, so you want to build a house of 10-story building. Eh, no problem. As long as you want it. But if you want to build a house of 10 story building, the only budget to have for you is 10 million naira. And you know it's almost impossible to do that. That's management. Management is essentially optimizing resources. Now, management 
in some sense, is like creating boundaries. For, for some of, I mean, the people here who work in corporate circles, you find that the management essentially creates boundaries for you. They create limits to which you can go or cannot go in what you do. So, for example, they tell you, okay, uh, in marketing, they will tell you, oh, uh, we want you to <clears throat> generate 50 cold leads. That's management. Creating a sense of, okay, we want you to generate 50 cold leads and we'll give you 1,000 error airtime. If, if you like, call 10,000 people, but you must generate at least 50 cold leads. That's management for you. Creating some kind of boundary. Now, an artist will probably say, ah, for me to do that, I need maybe like 10,000 naira airtime. So a manager will tell you, I will only give you 500 naira airtime. That's management. Management is essentially limiting resources in order to achieve the best. Management will not compromise on quality. They will tell you, I still want the best. And that's why, you know, interestingly, um, again, for some of us who have been you know, in corporate circles, you find that <laughs> people always want the best, but people don't always want to pay for the best. It's it's um it's an enigma. It's but it's the reality. It's it's what it's what it is. People want the best. People love the best, but people would get the best for would want to get the best for the cheapest price. And that's management. That's management. Management is essentially helping you manage your resources. Now, how do you now marry somebody who, who doesn't like to be limited and the need to be limited? I don't know if we get that, that contradiction. You don't like to be limited as, as a creative. If you want to write, you probably there's something, oh, I've forgotten this kind of pen. There's a kind of pen that people used to write and it's it's like royalty. And it's not cheap. <laughs> it's not cheap. It's, it's expensive. But, oh, that's what I want and I will do it. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of the crazy things I've done. I've ever done. No, I, I, don't, I don't even think I remember right now. But the point is, it's what I want and it's, it's what I will do. That's. That's what the artist thinks about. It's what I want. What I would do. That's what the creative person thinks about. But the manager thinks of, okay, it's what you want, no problem. But as long as you can stay within the confines of these resources, it is about limiting resources. Now, how do you marry these two um, needs? The need to express and the need to to save. One seeks a free flow without giving a damn. The other six to account for every little detail and therefore limit resource availability. You know, management is limiting your resources while art is going all out, going all out. I don't care what it takes. I don't care how much it costs. I will do this thing. That's art. Now, the reality, and that's one thing I need us all to come to terms with as creatives, art is a career. It's not just about creativity. Um, it's like when you say, I am driving a car. A car is not a car if you remove the battery. Even though the battery is not visible outside the car, a car is not a car if you remove the alternator. A car is not a car if you remove the wiper. It's no longer a complete car. A car is not a car if you remove the steering. A car is not a car if you remove the engine. Now, I, it looks like the engine is usually the most obvious one. But no, there are several parts that came together to form that one vehicle you call a car. Do you know that there are certain knots, just one tiny screw like this, that if you remove from the car, you can't drive that vehicle. One screw, something very tiny. If you remove it from the vehicle, you can't drive that vehicle. And I need us to realize that art is a career. Creating is just one part of the whole career. It's not everything. It's not the whole picture. You know, and that's, that's what many creatives don't seem to get. We think that art is all about creating. Yes, that's a part of it, but that's not the whole picture. 
And like all other career fields, management is an important part of heart. You know, we need to realize the fact that what I do is much more than just creating. What I'm creating is just part of it, like a chain line of processes. Okay, after I create, let me give to somebody who else who has the better experience in taking the step further. We need to realize that there is no career field that is self-existent as artists. We need to realize the fact that I am just part of a larger picture. I am not the only one in the picture as artists and as creatives. And that's why since day one here, we have, we have ensured and insisted on collaboration because it, it doesn't just take only you. I mean, if, if, um, I am very passionate about the Bible. But you see, like someone taught me long ago, he said, if you're not a Christian, no, it's not a problem because I also read the Quran. And I also read some other books. He said, if you're not a Christian, take the Bible as just a book you read. And there's one Bible, you know, one um, one of the things that I think is very wise in the Bible says one which is a thousand and two which is ten thousand. It's like a multiplier. So if one person can handle a thousand people, two people will handle ten thousand. It means there is power in collaboration. There is power in in doing it and hand it over to the next person and hand it over to the next person and hand it over to the next person. And it doesn't take a lot of work. In fact, it is killing to want to do it alone because you can't. You just can't. We need to come to terms with that reality. That what I do is not just me. It's not just about drawing. It's not just about painting. It's not just about creating music. It's not just about poetry. No. That's one part of the process. But it's all, all the parts. It's like creating chocolates. Chocolate is the major part, yes. But if you don't have paper to wrap it, nobody will buy your chocolate. If you don't have a carton to box it, nobody is going to buy your chocolate. You know? It's like, it's like making ice cream. Oh, it's very good to, to make ice cream. But if you don't have an ice cream making machine, people may most likely not patronize you. Meaning that for you to make your ice cream, you need an engineer. Apart from that, you need the cup. The cup they will put the ice cream. And the people will not put ice cream inside their hand and they will come and buy ice cream from ice cream machine. <laughs> I don't want to imagine that people will go to a mall and then put their hand inside ice cream machine and then the ice cream will just on their hand. No. That's not excellence. So even though the ice cream is the most important, it's not the only ingredient in the business of ice cream. And that's one thing I need us to come to terms with. Your art is not the only thing that exists in the chain line of creativity. No. 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 No one is self-existent. Please understand that. No one is self-existent. Many of the multinationals you see today, they, start, they don't do nothing by themselves. They just contract out. There's something they call oh, outsourcing here. Yeah. They outsource it. Oh, you do this part for us. You do this part for us. And then they come and assemble. So the reality is that art is a career. And like all other career fields, management is an important part. You just cannot compromise on management. You might not like it. You might not be comfortable with it. And um, again, like someone, you know, it's... Um, do you know that there are certain things that you're just naturally not good at? You're not good at them. But life would demand that you have those experiences. So, for example, some of us don't like conflict resol resolution. You prefer that if they are fighting, let them, let them tear their clothes. <laughs> I'm talking like the average... <laughs> Um, Nigerian here and I mean I, I, that's not disrespect to Nigeria I mean I, I love Nigeria and there are excellent Nigerians too but some of us were not good at conflict resolution 
if people are fighting, you prefer. In fact, you will be hailing them. Fight, fight on, fight on, fight on. Tear your clothes, tear our clothes. Like that. <laughs> But sometimes, imagine you now have a family, and two people in your family are fighting. While you can you can be hailing people outside to fight on, you just have to find a way to resolve the conflict. That is life demanded that you have a skill that you are not good at. Some of us are not very good at socializing, especially artists. In fact, I know that many of us are very guilty of this thing. We are not very good at socializing. If you go to a social distancing, you carry your phone, and then the next thing, you are thinking of typing something that you want to create, or you are sketching something, where there are people there. But sometimes life will demand that you socialize. And in the same way, the career of art has some demands that you just must have. That you just must have. Otherwise, what I call the farmer's plight will happen to you. And it is this. We'll come back to elements of a business. The farmer's plight is this. <clears throat> um, for those of us who, if you have ever been to a farm, you will understand what I mean. Um, I mean, I've traveled wide, not the old world, but then I've traveled far and wide, and I've seen some things. In one of my journeys, or certain parts of West Africa, you see that there are a lot of farmers, and these farmers do a lot of hard work. Hard work, very hard work. Sometimes they plant plantain, and then the plantain will produce only once in a year. Now imagine again, think about it too. Imagine that you as an artist, you have to create for one year, make an artwork for one year. Did you know pineapple takes about, I think about three years to grow? And then you go to the market and buy pineapple for 200 naira. That's the farmer's plight. <laughs> I think one first message, pressing phone in social gathering, guilty as charged. <laughs> you know? The farmer's plight is this. The farmer is paid a very meager amount for what they do for one year. The farmer will go with the plant. Sometimes they have to fight snakes and wild animals in order to secure the plant. And after everything, do you know that a plantain, as of, um, I think, <laughs> oh, Kadida said, I went to the farm, so they, they do a lot of work. But by the time you get there, especially in outside Lagos, you know, places outside Lagos, Benin, Akure, Oshun State, Kano, places like that, Zamfara. <laughs> By the time you want to buy a bunch of plantain, they can tell you they want to buy it 300 naira. And I'm telling you the truth. It's not, I'm not, I'm not over, I'm not hyping it up. Because they'll tell you, oh, I want to buy like 30 bunches. By the time they want to buy it, you think it's a lot of money. By the time they want to buy the 30 bunches, they'll tell you, oh, I'll give you 3,000 naira. That's the farmer's price. They get the, the smallest. Now, somebody will buy that plantain for 300 naira. Take it to the market and sell it for 1,000 naira. Do you know that that person selling it in the market is making more in one week than the farmer is making in one year? So that that doesn't happen to us as artists, we need to learn to collaborate and learn the secrets of our business. Otherwise, you find that you are just working for art collectors. And it's so bad. But you need to learn to master the art. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Khadija. Watermelon in the farm is 100 naira, but when I come to town, it's over 700 naira. Thank you. So you know that I have some, some precedence when I'm talking about these things. So this thing doesn't happen to us. We need to learn the secrets of business of creativity. Otherwise, you find that you're just creating, and then at some point you get frustrated in your process. And again, like, like we mentioned to you about two or three days ago, at Aslim, we are looking at really reviving the African creatives. 
and we can't get it wrong. You know, you and I, we just cannot get it wrong. We have to be strong on all fronts. We have to be able to develop a model that manages our creative process properly. And then... We're moving. The elements of a business. So you understand what I'm talking about. And then, so we understand that what you do is as much a business as what Dangote does, as what Bill Gates does, as what Microsoft does, as what Google does. Products of value. Every business has a product they offer. You as an artist, whether it is your music, it could even be your creativity, your problem-solving skills. You have a creative way of solving problems. That's your product. That's what you have to offer to the world. It's just that way. It could be the drama. It could be the poetry. It could be the painting or the music. Whatever it is, you have a product to offer. You have something to offer to the world. Um... Maybe we could we could do an exercise. Maybe later this evening. Your product is the solution to someone's problem. Every business solves a problem somewhere. Now, think about this. If the farmer, if all farmers in Nigeria said we are not selling what we have in our farm for for one week. I hope you know that <laughs> big men will cry. You know. Because at that point, everybody is thinking of what to eat. Food would get expensive. The little food everyone has, it now becomes <laughs> interesting. So, your product is the solution to someone's problem. And I know that many, many times the, the problem is that artists don't tend to see that what I'm doing is solving someone's problem. Again, like I said originally, or like we have, um, we have told us since the start of this session, I mean this cultural session, art is not just for aesthetic, it's to solve problems. So what, what you have is solving someone's problem. So it's product. So it means you have something very valuable to someone. Second, there is always a market for every business. Someone somewhere needs what you do. The same way you will sit in your house and think of dangote, um, dangote noodles or dangote sugar. Without, <laughs> you know, dangote didn't advertise to you. I, I don't think I've ever seen any dangote adverts on TV or in the newspaper. Except they are probably advertising for jobs. I don't think I've ever seen them advertising their sugar. I, I don't think I have. But you will sit in your house and you want to drink pap and you will think of Dangote. You sit in your house and you want to drink Gary and you think of Dangote. You sit in your house and you want to take oats and you think of Dangote because you need what they do. Oh, I want spaghetti. You think of Dangote. In the same way, someone somewhere sits in their house and thinks of what you do. And that's your market. The challenge that usually happens, again, for us creatives is this, is locating that someone. Locating that person that needs what you do is usually a very difficult challenge. Again, maybe because many creatives are not very social, we're not very open, we're uh, I think what, what you would call the word um, introverts, you know, many creatives believe they are, uh, believe they are introverted. So locating that someone is really hard and detailed work. It takes a lot of detailing. It takes a lot of profiling to get the people that need what you do because what you do is not for everyone. Um, so, for example, see why Belo does portrait photography, not just photography. Our market is completely different from someone that does wedding photography. 
I need us to get these things clearly so we understand that what we do is a business. It's not just the creative thing. No, no, no. It's, it's, I mean, it's the creative thing, yes, but then it's much more than just that. Uh, money, this is essentially value exchange. Um, again, I've always said this, and I think it makes sense, that don't think in money. I mean, see money here as just value, because I think money is a cheap way of thinking. Thinking of, think is as a value exchange system. I give something and I get something back. I give you something and you give me something in return. There's no free in Freetown. It's just that way. And please don't feel guilty for getting something in return for what you do. We need to come to terms. You know, I've, I've seen a lot of very, very silly comments on social media that uh, we think such as, uh, oh, can you draw me and I, I will recommend you to somebody. Can you go and buy Dangote rice and rec for free and then recommend Dangote to somebody? You know, can you write a poet for me? Yeah, a poem for me about my best day. No problem. Please pay. It's called value exchange. I'm giving you something, and you have to give me something in return. Even if it's not money. It could be you link me up with someone I need to meet. Please understand it as artists. Don't give what you do for free. Place value on it. No. Please don't do it. Please. Okay, what do you have to Even if you don't have the money. What do you have to offer? Please, I am begging you, do not make what you do cheap. Because it is value. You didn't get it cheap. You had to do a lot of hard work to get where you are in your creative process. Some people are sleeping now. You are here in a class trying to get better at what you do. Don't offer it for free. It's called value exchange. If there's no exchange, it's called cheating. If I give you and you don't give me back, it's you are cheating me. It's just as simple as that. So what you have is like a treasure island. Treasure it. Again, creatives, African creatives, Nigerian creatives, I am pleading, please treasure what you have. Please, enough of those days when we start... <sighs> When we, are, when we are drawing people as if they are begging us, or we are begging them, rather. No. What you have is valuable. Understand the principle of scarcity. When you make something scarce, everybody looks for, for it. Um, one very simple scenario. When cash... When cash was scarce. When cash was scarce last year, and rather this year, earlier this year, do you know that everybody, even people don't, who don't have money, was looking for cash? Because when you make something scarce, it becomes extremely valuable. People don't look for what is freely available. They don't, they don't search it out. No, they don't. But when you make it scarce, they will look for it. Please, do not again. I repeat, it's it's almost see, see it's something that <laughs> if you come to me personally, in one of the places where I, I got trained, it's almost like something that that the whole institution will frown upon. Please don't do it. There has to be a fair value exchange in return for what you do. Please do not do it. You didn't get where you are for free. You didn't get where you are for, you didn't get there cheap. You know, it wasn't cheap getting there. Some of us had to stay late night. Some of us didn't sleep. You are here in this class. <laughs> this is this is day two. This is session four. It's not easy doing this. It's not easy. I mean, there are a million and one things to think about in a country like Nigeria, but yet you, you, you left everything and you came for a class like this, and then somebody comes to you tomorrow, ah, I want to do my birthday, ah, don't you think you should paint me? Yes, I think I should paint you, but please, 
my painting costs 200,000 Naira. Do you understand? Please exchange value for what you do. Okay, you don't have 200,000 Naira. How much can you pay me? Oh, I have 100,000 Naira. No, it won't work. Okay, I have 100,000 Naira and I can give you movie tickets to go and watch Wakanda forever. Eh, hey, now you're talking. <laughs> Because we must place value on what we do. Then the third one, human resources. Oh, so I must have gotten this wrong. Human resources is essentially the people. It's called building a network. Again, that's one of the reasons why we have insisted on collaboration here since day one. Talk to people around you. Build a network. You can't do it alone. And that's the thing about businesses. In the many places where they call Dangote's name today, he doesn't even know how many... Uh, <laughs> he doesn't know. Do you think Dangote knows the, the new Cancrini of Lagos, where they sell his products? He, he may know the major distributors. He doesn't know the the Ya Sikira shop that sells Dangote sugar. You know, he doesn't know your Michael shop that sells Dangote salt. He doesn't. Do you understand? It's called building a network. Build a valuable network. Ensure that there are people around you who can... And this is, again, that's another thing we need to think about as artists. Because, again, that's one thing I found. Painters want to be friends with painters. What value are you people giving each other? Think about it now. What value? We need to be very intentional about relationships we keep around us. And that's one thing you find with business owners. They don't keep people that don't add to their business. <laughs> they don't. Go and, go and check it proper. If you, if you are not adding anything to their business, you will call them, they won't respond. But if you are adding something, you will chat to them like this. They will, they will treat you like gold. Do you understand? Keep people that add value to what you do. Okay? I'm not very good at marketing, but this guy is very good at marketing. Keep him like a treasured house. Okay, I'm not very good at speaking, but this guy can speak. Keep him as your curator so that if somebody asks you tomorrow, we need you to write a proposal for the United Nations. Yes, I have a team. I have my curator. I have my marketer. I have my design team. I have everything. And that's what makes you look like a properly structured business. Because art is more than just the creating. Oh, yeah. So I see that a lot has been going on in the chat box. Khadija, I decided last year, I told people around me, no more free paintings. I think that's, that's a very wise decision. It might be difficult at first, but it's a very wise decision. Oh, Toria said, good decision. Even when my sister got married this year, wanted pieces for her. I drafted the budget and sizes and gave her the bill. Told her to pay 70% before I do it. And that's my sister. Which makes sense. When you make something scarce, it becomes valuable. 48 laws of power. Temidayo. Thank you, Temidayo. So, understand that. Now, if you, if you now think about this, you see that what we have been running is a poorly run business because you didn't realize it was a business. And now it's time to wake up to the reality that what you do is a business. And then we'll give some hints and then we'll go for our breakout sessions. Um, I think that tonight's session has been interesting. So what do I do as a business owner? Develop a, a business plan or strategy. Please, I beg you, again, artists, I know it's not something, we don't like all the administrative whatever, whatever. But see, don't create for one week. Sit down with your laptop or your pen and paper and draw up a plan. Because, <laughs> so you don't become what um, someone taught me in secondary school, you know, a geography teacher. He said, you become a caravan. According to him, a caravan is a vehicle moving without a direction. So, if you tell him to go to a, uh, to Anambra today, <laughs> let's go. If you tell him, let's go to Hong Kong tomorrow, no problem. If you tell him, let's go to Zambiza tomorrow, 
bad and more. If you tell him to come to Lagos next tomorrow, because he, he himself doesn't have a direction. And that's the thing. There is no business that works without a plan. So even if it's just a one-page document, develop a plan, a business plan. Please, as an artist, it's very important for what you do. You Because, you see, um, there's this person I I learned a lot from, Chris Doe. I mean, some of you might know him. Chris Doe is, is one of the leading designers in the world today. And I, I mean, he inspires a lot of creatives. You, you can check him up on YouTube. If you had to pay for marketing, I know you do the marketing yourself. You are promoting on Instagram and all of that. Send it to your friends. If you had to pay a team for marketing, <laughs> if you had to pay for everything that should actually be, you understand the fact that you run a business. So develop a plan. Develop a progressive plan for yourself, please. Please do not compromise. See, it's, it's stressful. It's not easy. It's not interesting. It's not as interesting as drawing, painting, writing, creative, you know, creative thinking. It's not as interesting as all that. But it's important. It's, in fact, it's more important than the creative, the creative process. It's like saying, okay, I want to make a car. And you are saying, make, a, make an engine, make a tire, make a glass, make a window. But you, are, you don't have a plan on how to assemble them. What if they now add the tire to the, to the engine and say, it's a beast, an engine is supposed to drive the tire. A business plan is what brings all the several components together. It makes everything make sense. Please don't compromise on it. Please don't compromise on it. Develop a proper business plan. It might not be all the detail in the world, but at least something to guide what you do. You could develop a business plan or a strategy for the next one year. And please time your business plan. I mean, we we'll have. I mean, in our other courses, we have a three-month course. Not this one. This is again. This is just a crash course, three days to help you as an artist and, and as a creative. So, I mean, in that we can go into more details. But please don't compromise. Develop a business plan. Second, get a proper management team or structure. Now, one of the things I've also found, you know, Semidio typed in the chat box that what, when you make something scarce, it becomes valuable, 48 loss of power. One of the things I've also found is this, and you'll find that a lot of us who are visual and um, liberal artists don't practice these things. You don't restrict access to yourself. No. Please don't do it. If you want to go and see Bill Gates tomorrow, you have to schedule. <laughs> and that way, you, you write in advance that, okay, I want to see Bill Gates. It's just that way. Get a proper management structure. Someone wants to come and see you, even though the person is your friend, please go through my team. Oh, every, everybody feels a form. Please just feel it. I know that you'll see me. I know you're my friend and all of that, but please just feel the form. Oh, da, 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 da. get a proper management structure. Get somebody to handle your commissions. Get somebody to handle your marketing. You are not good at it. No problem. It doesn't matter. Look for somebody who is good at it. Abi. <laughs> because again, you know, when you do your business plan, that will tell you the things and the people you need around you. But you need to set that structure, okay, from marketing and advertising and getting jobs to the creating, which is what I do, and then to the delivery, get a delivery team. Get 
a review team to get the review of your clients. Get, get things in place. Get a proper management structure. Because what you do is a business. And then engage experts in their career fields. Your area of expertise is creativity. Let other experts do their jobs. You know, let them do their own jobs too. Oh, you can't, you're, you're not very good at marketing. Get a, a marketing expert. You're not very good at talking. Get a curator. Happy. And then set his pricing structure. I think, um, okay, yeah, get better trained at what you do. Um, don't stop learning as an artist. Um, what I found again, and it's usually the death of any business, is many businesses don't forecast, they don't plan for the future. So please don't stop learning. Get better trained at what you do. Someone was asking about um, the future of traditional arts today. It makes sense to just keep up with the times. You get better trained at what you do. Um, there's something that, that used to be around a long time ago. It's, it's, there's a job they call typewriter. You know, somebody who their only job is to type on typewriter. But today, all those people, they, they, if they stuck with being a typewriter and they didn't upgrade, they would see, they would die in penury today because nobody even uses any typewriter anymore. So get better trained at what you do. And then I was going to talk about cataloging. I think that's for an extended class, not for this one. Thanks for listening. Thank you, everyone. Um, so that said, I've done a lot of talking. I need one or two feedbacks before we go into our breakout sessions, and then I'll tell us what to do. I need feedback, or we should talk. Can someone please unmute and talk? Hi. Oh, yeah, Khadija, please go on. This is a really wonderful session, seriously. Like, it's very insightful. And I'm sure a lot of us have just learned a lot. And <laughs> most importantly, apply it. Like, most of what you see, it, you know, it's things. You know, we kind of think about it deep down, I guess, but now that someone is actually saying it, I think it's going to be very intentional, you know, the whole networking thing, because when you, you, when you just keep artists around you, okay, like, it's not like they're going to be the one, your, you know, your client. So it's networking, the importance of networking. I, I'm going to really take that one seriously, personally. Anyway, so thank you very much for this session. It's very impactful. Thank you, Khadija. Uh, okay. I saw that Stanley was on. Okay, is someone else saying something? Kill yeah, me. someone else is saying something. Okay, someone talking. Please go. Okay, um, this is John. Everyone, hello, everyone. Um, I, my God, like, my ears and my eyes have been on the screen since you started talking, and then you continue to beg and beg for us not to, you know, give off our work of creativity for free. It was like you were talking that one, you know, like that was like getting to me, 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 me. Because over time, we just feel like I can create this, and you get into your creativity mood and boom, there is something up. And someone can just call you from the blues, out of the blues, your friend, family, and they, they could say, since you do this thing, just do it. Um, because you possibly are not going to hell and heaven to get what you need. You just do it for free. Do it for free. And it's almost like this is not a career thing. But I think you have broken that myth that art is really something you could pursue as a career. So that was like the highest point for me. Thank you. All right. Thanks, John. Okay, Kelvin. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Hello. Can we hear oh, you? Yeah, we can hear you, Kelvin. Please go on. All right. Um, thank you so much for for this section. Honestly, I I participated a bit late, but I enjoyed every every part I met. Um, I want to speak 
on this particular one you, you spoke about, that is having an organized management team. It is so much very important, truly, because I've had experience about this um, late this year, and it was so much. Like, people keep calling you on social media. Please, I want to buy your work as an NFT. I want to do this. A lot of these guys come in like a scam. There are things sometimes you don't even know things about. Do you understand? Like, when it came to me severally, I almost bought into some of them, like, because they tell you ridiculous amounts and so many things. In fact, some of them seems very, very real. Now, I noticed I could not do it alone, and I had to employ some persons that are very, very good at those things. In fact, they are, they are like detectives when it comes to online businesses and computer, whatever, and all that. So a lot of them did so much work for me. And in fact, I got to understand so much that it, is, it was deeper selling work online than the way it appears. It's not just everybody who comes, I want to buy a work and this, and then you begin to give it out like cheaply. So you truly need to have a good management structure. So for me, when all those happened, I told myself that I think I need to get some people to be handling my media stuff. And then you, you spoke about writing and all that. Yes, truly. You cannot be an artist and at the same time the writer and all these. Like, if you check great movies that we watch, for example, Apocalypto, that after years and upon years it still remains. Artists that work on that set alone were over, over if, if not more than 30 something, artists, real creative artists. Apart from Mel Gibson, all that. Uh, uh, so when you calculate the number of cast and the number of crew on on uh, Mel Gibson Apocalypto alone, it's over 100. So I am very, very much interested in that part. You said you need to have a good management structure, and for me, that is one very paramount thing we shouldn't forget. I'm going to take it real serious this year. Thank you. Thank you, Kelvin. Thank you. Was someone else going to say something? Okay. Yes, I am. Good evening. Good evening, Miriam. It was like you spoke from a place where everyone can relate to. Like it's the audacity and entitlement of certain people to always feel like, yes, you can do it for free, you can do it for free. But this session was eye-opening, so next time, I won't do it for free. Thank you. Thank you, Miriam. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Um, <laughs> oh, it's really just fantastic for me. So, <laughs> now for our breakout yeah, session this please. evening. Oh, yeah, Joseph, please go on. All right. I, I was... I joined a little bit late, and um, coupled with the fact that um, the network was just uh, messing around with me, I would say that this um, is really painful that I missed like some of the details of this. Um, the, should I say teaching? Really, really painful. So I would like to ask if it's possible that to get, I don't know, maybe the, the should I call it slide now? The should I say PowerPoint slide? I don't know if it's possible that I get. Like a copy of this training for you know personal studies later. I don't know how possi uh, possible it is. Uh, so we're going to talk about all that, uh, the recordings, the slides, and all of that. So we will talk about all that. I believe at the end, if not tonight, tomorrow. All right. So thank you. Thank you. So for our breakout sessions, we, we are 15 now, so we can do three breakout rooms. Now, in the breakout rooms, I want us to pick a business, an art business, you know, art business. Let's even say, let's not use visual art. Let's use um, poetry. Unfortunately, Priceless is not here now. Who else is a poet here? 
I think I, Queen is a poet. Yeah, I'm Miriam a poet. is a poet. I am. Khadija is a poet. I okay. was a poet. So, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> it was a pain, so I stopped. <laughs> Interesting. So, um, let's say um, you run a poetry business. Now, again, run a poetry business. I want us to try and develop a practical business plan for a Nigerian economy, for the Nigerian mm-hmm. economy today, in each of our classes. And then we'll come back and present it to us. So you already know how it runs. Please, guys, keep the conversations going. If no one is talking, start the conversation. Other people will join. And um, again, don't don't be drawn back. <laughs> Let's not be socially distant from other people. So we're creating three rooms. We can do 10 minutes. And I'll see you guys in a few, in 10 minutes.
Uh, a God. God. Oh. God. Of the authority. Oh. It's like we are back online. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 it's not as if it is that we are back online. It's not, it's not more like again, we are back online. <laughs> Sorry, you guys thought you have the whole time. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. All right, all right, no problem. We'll make whatever effort we need to. I like that. Yeah. Um. So we eventually had two rooms. I had to like close the other two. So okay. So tell me, what group were you in? One or two? Kadija's group, group two. Yes, two. Two. <laughs> Okay, yeah. share group two will go first this night. Yeah. No, yeah. we are number two now. Let's go second now. <laughs> <laughs> I beg, go for it. Let us Shane, let us the them. job number again. Well, no. Number one should go first. Yes. Number one should go first. <laughs> I, I love my team. Number one should go first. So imagine that you fall in group one tomorrow. What happens? <laughs> All right, then we'll go first. <laughs> no, 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 I mean, it, it, it looks like a general consensus that like group one should go first. So yeah, I'm not in group two. You're not in group two. I'm always in group two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's let's have group one first. Group one. I mean, I am just picking for group one. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm pleased for group one. We do have enough time to pardon our our excesses. So okay, what we discussed is that, considering the fact that maybe we met a young talent in poet poetry and want to make the person have a structured business around the talent. So what can we do? So the first thing we talked about is getting a manager. Manager will schedule the time. So if someone should book an event now with the person, the person will go to the manager, not to the not to the um, person, say with the manager. Talk about okay, um, I have an event for maybe for twenty seven of next month. Okay, so the manager will talk, will check the schedule. I don't even say online. Okay. It would okay, I'm online. It would the manager will check the schedule, okay. Our artist is free, our poet is free on maybe this time, then schedule an event, also give the person the prize. So that, and, and the manager will be in direct contact with the client, making a reservation, any of that thing. That's the first thing. Manager, so that the poet will not be under duress, under pressure to attest many things. Number two, we need a marketing team. So this team is responsible for. Um, promoting the artist, so probably um, maybe on social media, maybe uh, maybe like running ads. Um, I'm, I'm not calling it ads, but something like it, promoting something. Yeah, maybe you know, some running ads, doing things like that. So that was the thing before, so that the artist can become much more promoted. I feel like that no matter what you are doing, if you are not adding positives, I want to see your time. She understand. Then the third thing would be the media team. You understand to keep the social, the um, artist life, artist, the poet life, social life active. So, okay, the the media team will do, let's say, chat, comments, things like that. You understand. So with those, that is probably, probably everything. But with those three, I feel that the person is good to go. So every other thing I was doing, like signing deals. Signing the uh, contract, things like that, will be done by the manager. The marketing team will be working on promoting the artist, and the media team will be working on the artist's online presence. And so, I should put my full stop there. Except this one, yes, I will be on the phone. Toyra Stanley. Okay. So group group two. 
Did you feel like you should have gone first? Do you feel intimidated now? Ah, uh, no. How can we be intimidated? Ah. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> when I have when I have Kadija there, do you, do you know the team I have? How can I be intimidated? <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right. Amazing presentation, Group One. Amazing. Um, having the manager. Sorry, please. Can I say something? Please. Yeah. Please don't hear Georgios or uh, Group Two goes. So you will not listen to my mistake. Okay. <laughs> Please let them stop their own for so you will not give us our own together. Oh, <laughs> no problem. Group two, please go on. Okay. Um limitless team. Limitless creatives is uh, yes. the group the group name. Now we we already have an established uh, organization which we offer services like Organizing seminars uh, for schools, and then uh, we we do performances also for ev events like weddings, anniversaries, and and all that. Now, for each of these uh, each of these performances, we have different prizes slated for each of them. Like for instance, for wedding invitation, for instance, we go for prizes like ten million, fifteen depending on what and what we we are supposed to give like and in the team we have poet poets like um likes of Khadija and the rest who would and then we have dancers we also have um, artists like uh, live performing artists those who can actually make portraits live on stage and then uh, we have all of that structure now we're called upon like for instance we called upon for a, a wedding um invitation and we we've actually agreed on price after being met with our team and organization first when you're meeting a team you first of all have to have to speak with um the pas and secretaries and the rest of them after which the board meeting agree on prices and all that then we the performers performers we go for to the events. Now on the event, we structure it this way. When we on stage doing uh the the performances like um Khadija, uh, we create romantic poems re that is related to the couples. And then on stage there, we also have artists who are actually drawing the couple's life, which are not shown. They, they are not displayed until the end of the, the the stories we are telling using our poetry. And then we have the dancers entertaining and also trying to demonstrate what the poet is talking about. I think at this point, let me uh, allow my team to also go down a little about our discussion. Then we we'll wrap it up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, okay, in addition to that, part of our business, Limitless, we also have a section that customizes um, poetry verses on mugs, on books, and, you know, special packages like that. We do have a section that does that, and then it's for a fee also. So, and you see, as I already said, we organize workshops for schools. So, yeah, that. So, we are everywhere. Everywhere so we are. Mariam, over to you. Okay. okay, so I think the network dropped yeah. Miriam out. Okay. All right. Yeah, so to make money as a poetry thing. Okay, Kelvin, you were going to say something. Or oh, you guys are done? Yeah. Um, actually, that's on. That's our discussion. So from the foregoing, it's it's a clear indication that we have uh, an organized team already. We have a name. We have the. Um, the structures, which is from the secretary to the 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 assistants and all that, and then those performing, 
we still have those performing in like we have collaborate we collaborate actually we have live performer like an artist who draws on stage we still have Khadija and people like who who do the poetry we still have dancers and all of that thank you so that's just basically our discussion all right thank you thank you group two um again amazing amazing inputs from both teams uh, so let's do group one first. I think that was amazing. The fact that you have a manager, I believe, yeah, an artist manager or something that you said, then you also said you do bookings and all of that. Uh, it sounds more like a business, you know, and I think the only risk with um, using a manager is sometimes the manager gets extremely powerful that um, there are no measures to put the manager in check. And that's another level of business management. But um, those are things that they are like advanced level. At the first, it's good to have that structure. But then after some time, it's good to also have like check and balance. Uh, but then amazing input from Group 1. And I think it was courageous of you guys to have gone without um, any soft landing. Group 2, amazing, amazing input. Uh, it sounded more like a value proposition uh, rather than a business plan or like, yeah, it's sounded more like a value proposition. We have speed artists, we have dancers, we have poets. It sounded more like trying to pitch rather than a structure. And I think I heard the part of um, PA and all of that. Um, makes sense. Uh, I think that's still like elementary though. Although I think what Group 1 2 did is, is elementary, it's not detailed, but then, uh, I mean, that's that's the feedback I think I have. Uh, you know, to set up a structure for something like that. You could have, like, somebody in charge of speed artists, like their speed art manager. You could have somebody in charge of dancers, dancing manager or something, and then, you could have like a general manager, you could have a booking department, you could have, you know, because what you sounded, what, what, you, what you were talking about, at least less creatives, you were talking about bringing like a mesh of many creatives together. You could have like a general uh, booking team who takes the bookings and then they take it to the manager, is, you know, responsible, like something like that, like a structure for operations. So it doesn't look like a scattered business, but then, I think it's an amazing idea. Thank you, everyone. Um, so, are you there? Is Tahira there? I'm coming. Let me check for you. Okay, thanks. But she's muted. Oh, okay. Tyra, are you there? Uh oh, I think Tyra left my phone somewhere. Um, we'll meet at 7 a.m. tomorrow. Tomorrow we're talking about NFTs in the morning, and then in the evening we're supposed to present our our projects. Um, you should have seen the groupings on the group right now. Please try and um, maybe what we'll do is we'll finish early in the morning so that we can have some extra time to talk about our projects and uh, we can come back and present them in the evening. We have six groups. We should have um, that much presentation in the, the evening. Let's um, try to make it detailed. Let's try to uh, actually work on it. Then the other part that I believe Toyota should have come to handle is that yeah, you guys should follow us Flame on Instagram and the the academy page. I think you would send the 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 link, Instagram link to the group so that you guys can um, follow to get updates. That said, thank you everyone for this evening. We'll see you all tomorrow, seven a.m. Thank you very much. Thank you and good night. Thank you.